my clock shows it's currently 10.50 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, get started with this session. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Derek Ramsey. I will be moderating this session. Uh, this presentation uh, is titled Accessibility in Sakai and will be presented by Chris Knapp. Uh, if anyone has any questions during the session, please use the uh, Q&A area uh, as well as the chat. Enter them in. Um, at any time, go ahead and enter them in. Chris, what's your preference here as far as um, answering questions? Do you want to wrap up at the end or do you want me to bring them up as they come in? Yeah, if we can if we can hold and answer questions at the end of the session, just so we can make sure we get through the demo portion, that would probably be best. Okay, sounds perfect. Uh, so everyone knows this session is recorded, will be available at a later date on the Sakai YouTube channel. If anyone has any problems with the video or audio, uh, use the chat box, let me know, and I'll work with you to get that taken care of. Uh, Chris, go ahead. Great, thanks, Derek. Again, my name is Chris Knapp. I'm an accessibility consultant and tester that's been serving as part of the Sakai QA team for going on two years now. Um, for any of you who don't know me, I should also point out that I am a person with a disability. I'm statutorily blind and use a screen reader on my computer, which is, of course, is very germane to the topic that we'll be covering during this session, as screen reader users like me have to rely on keyboard navigation to interact with sites like Sakai. Uh, during this session, I'm going to just give you a little insight into what it's like for blind and low vision users to interact with sites like Sakai by walking you through a hands-on demo focused on some basic keyboard navigation. We'll spend about 15 minutes or so doing the interactive demo and then another five or 10 minutes uh, explaining the relevance of keyboard navigation as it relates to our accessibility testing strategy for Sakai. And then if we have time, of course, at the end, uh, we'll just spend a few minutes doing a Q&A session. So because of some recent health issues, I wanted to come up with some contingencies in the event I wasn't able to present some or all of this material live. So at different points during the presentation, I'm going to enable the computer audio in screen share. So you'll be able to hear my JAWS screen reader and see some of my background applications as I'm navigating around on the desktop. And that's all by design. This is not gonna be the most polished presentation. Things might not go as planned. In fact, I almost guarantee that they won't. That's just how technology is. But the point is to have you experience at least a little bit of what the average screen reader user goes through. So before we launch into our interactive session, I thought that we would just start by covering some screen reader basics. So for this first part, I actually am going to navigate over to my desktop and play a short video that I pre-recorded using my JAWS screen reader. And I realize that many of you aren't used to listening to JAWS and it might be hard for, uh, for some of you to be, understand them. So I did set this up so that uh, I included the text so that you can follow along with that just so just so you know. And then um, as just as a head is up, uh, the video is about three and a half minutes long. So I'm going to go ahead and start screen share here and see if we can go ahead and play the video. USB drive enter. Movies and TV. Live trend escape. Movies TV escape. All offer. It's that icon dash jaw screen escape. Production. Chris, has anyone ever told you that you have the perfect face for radio? Left parent JK, Cole, you know I joke because I care, colon. Right parent, hi everyone, I'm Jaws and I'll be giving you a little crash course about screen readers. As implied in the name, screen readers, like me, produce synthesized speech to read aloud the content displayed on the computer screen. As a way of conveying left parent otherwise visual right parent information to a blind slash low dash vision user. Typically, you as the drive left parent information all right, sounds like we're having some technical difficulties already. All right, we're going to try this again. You have started screen. Try Sakai cold meeting control. Jaws home. Try Sakai colon home colon dashboard. Search box edit. F. File X enter. File explore. Cancel button enter. OK. Can. OK. Cancel. OK. But can enter. F tool box. Search edit box. Search box. Preview levels. This. Sack. 
recent sack video screen web sack 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 video video sack hike video video one sack hike three view level six document pitch this two 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 sack hive one drive this level two three d desktop document download music picture video window us enter shell folder view i s s s sap sap Sakai dash gradebook dash pay, Sakai dash pro pay, Sakai dash test pay, Sakai 22 dash pay, Sakai accessibility test, Sakai access, Sakai access, Sakai accessible pay, Sakai accessibility issues pay, ship dash it, sem, sem, s, 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 sam, dis, sam, sample guest voice, s, sample let pay, si, s, sit one, s, s, snow, sam, pay, straits area federal credit union dash e, talent map on s, Sakai gateway with pay, 2018. When S. Salish J. S. Sale Pay. Sakai Gateway with Pay. Sakai Dash Conversations Demo Vid Pay. Sakai Dash Gradebook Dash Item Menus Not Pay. Sakai Dash Pro Pay. Sakai Dash Tools Not Pay. Sakai 22 Dash Accessibility. Sakai 22 Pay. Sakai Accessibility Pay. Sakai Messaging. Sakai Lessons Tool. Sakai Forums Net. Sakai Dropbox. Sakai Con Dash Jaws Screen okay, Reader Demo Video. Hopefully the audio is going to come to press play here. Enter. Movies and TV. Movies and TV. Oh, now playing right. Escape. Thanks for the introduction. Chris, has anyone ever told you that you have the perfect face for radio? Left parent JK. Very funny. Cole, you know I joke because I care. Colon. Right parent. Hi everyone. I'm Jaws and I'll be giving you a little crash course about screen readers. As implied in the name, screen readers, like me, produce synthesized speech to read aloud the content displayed on the computer screen. As a way of conveying left parent otherwise visual right parent information to a blind slash low dash vision user. Typically, the user is able to control what information gets read aloud by the screen reader by using their keyboard to type in text, execute specially designated keyboard commands, or by using directional keys to navigate their cursor around to different parts of the screen. In addition to speaking out screen reader specific controls that allow the user to operate their assistive technology, the screen reader is designed to read both the viewable, static text that appears on the screen, as well as other left quote alternative right quote text, image descriptions, etc. that is programmatically accessed through the backdash end code, often by utilizing accessible rich internet applications, or ARIA, which is a set of roles that can now see the screen. web content and web applications more accessible for people with disabilities. As a general rule of thumb, you can think of it like this, a screen reader user is only able to interact with that part of a website that before? currently has focus left parent I.E. The place on the screen where their cursor appears, right USB there, so drive, what movies do I and TV, Alt F4, but USB drive okay. left Try Sakai colon home colon US meeting controls all this. All right, sounds like we're having issues with the the screen share not playing the video, so I apologize for that. Yes, I was seeing the video. Were you able to hear it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, in here. We, here in the room, Chuck wasn't able to, so we thought you guys weren't hearing. Yeah. The audio. No, it actually played perfectly the first time, and, oh, and okay. we were well, navigating around. I'm like, is this part of the demo? <laughs> no, so apologies. We had we had a little bit of a technical misunderstanding here in the room, so uh, we okay, weren't thinking yeah, we, anybody we else was Yeah, we saw the video and we heard the audio, so it was okay. all good on this end. So, so what we'll do is we'll move on and we'll make sure that we get this corrected uh, for folks to watch the full video with Jaws reading that content, and I'll come back to that um, because uh, that's actually. Uh, on part of the site that we're going to be taking a look at so folks can see all the information about screen readers, but just in, in uh, um, you know, just uh, for the sake of just getting through this and the rest of what we want to do with the, the demo, let's go ahead and move on. Um, so uh, there are a number of screen readers. Um, and really quick here, I just got to pull my screen back up here. Um, so of course I use JAWS, which is probably one of the more popular commercially available screen readers on the market for PC. Um, but you know, unless you're part of an organization that has an enterprise license, JAWS is rather steep price tag, can make it somewhat cost prohibitive for uh, a lot of users. So um, a lot of blind and low vision users are actually opting for a free open source screen reader called NVDA which stands for non-visual desktop access. And then additionally, um, Apple actually has 
a, a screen reader called VoiceOver that's baked right into its operating system that you can switch on, switch on and off right in the, in the settings, which is what I use on my iPhone. And there are many, many others, which is good and bad. Good because there are many tools to assist with accessibility and to uh, you know, help individuals with disabilities, but bad because too many options equates to too many variables, which means that it's virtually impossible for users to learn the ins and outs of all these different tools. And then of course, from a QA testing perspective, it makes it harder to isolate the source of a problem and really get at the root cause um, because of all the different uh, combinations of screen readers and web browsers can produce different results. So enough about screen readers, we're gonna move on to the interactive demo now. I, and before I enable screen share, I want everybody to raise their right hand and repeat after me. I state your name, do solemnly swear, to only use standard keyboard commands during the following demo. I will not in good conscience use my computer mouse or mouse pad or touchpad or similar means of manipulating the, the cursor because this would amount to cheating and winners never cheat and cheaters never win. Okay, so we got that out of the way. That's my, that's my legal disclaimer. Um, one last thing I should point out that for the demo, I'm using a Lenovo ThinkPad with Windows 10, and I'm using the Google Chrome web browser. Uh, plus I have my JAWS running in the background. So you may see some weird different uh, cursor behavior and, and focus rings and stuff that you won't necessarily be able to replicate on your end. Um, and I'm not going to en enable audio on screen share for this portion because it might be too distracting to listen to my JAWS screen reader as, as we're going through the demo. Uh, and also different machines and operating systems may require different keystrokes for, for some of these keyboard commands. So for again, for this demo, we're primarily focused on the experience of a Windows user. And for folks that are using Macs and uh, are maybe on older operating systems that haven't been updated in a while, uh, you may, and if you notice, I'm able to tab to, you know, certain elements that you're not able to tab to during the demo, uh, you may need to go into your system or into your settings into system preferences slash accessibility slash keyboard and enable the um, enable full ac uh, keyboard access uh, option. Okay, so we're going to do screen share here again. And let me make sure that the sound won't come through here. Okay. All right, and so really quick, let me just try to optimize my screen, make sure that um, that that's uh, maximized for everyone. So, uh, so you uh, hopefully everybody should be on the TriSakai website. You should have uh, had to be on there to access this session. And so, uh, and again, before the conference. Uh, we actually went in and set it up so that all your user IDs uh, should uh, be set up as students on the A11Y site that we're going to navigate here to momentarily. So uh, the first thing, though, I thought we'd start with is just showing you some uh, shortcuts that are built into Sakai, which are, are really helpful. So all of you as sighted users, you, of course, have the best possible shortcut possible or at your disposal and that you can see. You can see your cursor. Uh, you can, you know, see where uh, you want to move your uh, cursor to on your screen. And of course, you have access to the uh, to the computer mouse, and you can move your cursor from point A to point B. But for the rest of us, we have to, you know, rely on more conventional keyboard uh, shortcuts, and that's what we're going to focus on here. So. Um, the first thing uh, we're, we're going to show is how to access the use the shortcut for the uh, list of sites. So the shortcut in Sakai for accessing the list of sites is um, Alt plus W for uh, Windows users. And for Mac users, uh, since you don't have uh, an Alt key, I believe the shortcut is Option plus Control plus W. So um, if you go ahead and press that, this is, you're gonna see something like this. And um, then from here, you should be able to use your tab key and shift tab to kind of move through these selections. And so we wanna, we wanna um, go ahead and when you 
get focused on this A11Y site, um, we're going to go ahead and press enter. Now, this is going to launch the A11Y um, site, and it, the page is going to refresh. And for me, my screen reader starts to automatically start to read aloud the contents of the page. So I'm going to hit escape to get JAWS to, to quit talking here. And uh, but this brings me up to my next point is that uh, as you're working in Sakai and as you're uh, performing different uh, tasks and, and performing different operations, uh, many times the page will refresh. And when it does, uh, a lot of times the, the focus will, it will jump to the top of the, to the page and the cursor will get moved to the top of the page. And so um, luckily Sakai has a, another handy dandy shortcut that uh, allows you to jump down into the main content area of the page. And so, uh, but just before we, we show that, uh, and there's a couple of different ways you can access that shortcut. I just wanna make sure that my cursor is at the upper left most uh, portion of, of the uh, page. So I'm gonna do control home, and that's gonna put my cursor up into that title area of the page. And um, if you're on a, a machine that doesn't have a home key, uh, you might have to tab or shift tab to try to get your cursor up there. Uh, but from here, we can access this, um, this uh, jump to main content shortcut a couple of different ways. We can navigate down to it by either arrowing, or if you hit tab, it should be the first item in the tab order. And so I hear my, my screen readers tell me that I just uh, navigated onto the skip link navigation, jump to content. And then it also, it also uh, reports to me that there's a, you know, a C in brackets telling me that this is the trigger key for this shortcut. And so if I press enter here, it's going to jump me down into the main content area of the page. Uh, of course, there's not a lot here on this site. So it, it's, uh, um, you know, uh, not going to do, uh, it's not going to be super helpful here, but uh, let me do control home again, go back up to the top. Um, but if we do it this time using the shortcut, uh, for Windows users, it's going to be Alt-C. Again, uh, Mac users, I believe it's going to be Option plus Control plus C. But if we do, if we press that again, we, we jump back down to the main content. Um, and so the third shortcut that I wanted to show really quick uh, for this portion of the demo is the shortcut for accessing the list of tools. And so um, that shortcut for Windows users is Alt plus L. Uh, Mac users, again, option plus control plus L. And so if we do all L, and for sighted users, I believe the site kind of grays out here and um, you have to, it might be difficult to see um, the, the options as you're moving around uh, in the background. But if we start to tab, we can tab through a list of tools. And uh, if we do shift tab, we can move backwards. So I hear resources, assignments, and we're going to land on test and quizzes. And once you have focus on that, we're going to go ahead and press enter. So this is going to launch the test and quizzes tool within our A11Y course site. And um, I'm really going to quick going to do the Alt C shortcut. And I'm going to move down to the main content area. And I'm just going to start the down arrow here because I want to get to the list of assessments. And I'm going to keep going down here to the list of uh, current assessments table until I land on this a 11 wide demo sample assessment and it's telling me i can take this assessment so if you can get focus on that by down arrowing or tabbing uh, once you're there go ahead and press enter it's gonna it's gonna go ahead and launch the assessment and then i'm gonna hit alt c again and I'm, I'm gonna get, wanna get down to the button to begin the assessment. Now I was already in here kind of messing around doing some testing. So, so for me, it's gonna say continue assessment, but, and if I jump down here again, sorry. So here I am, I'm on the continue assessment. Again, you're all probably looking for a begin assessment, but once you have focus on that, we're gonna press enter. And we're gonna be able to begin this short four question assessment that I created. So we're gonna do Alt C. I'm gonna down arrow to the first question. So I hear it say, how does the JAWS screen reader pronounce you know what? So I'm gonna let all you uh, guess as to what the phonetic pronunciation is for how JAWS uh, announces Sakai. 
And so, and then if you go down here, I'm arrowing down here, these are radio buttons. So once you get on, you know, at the option that you think is, is correct, what we're gonna do is press the space bar to toggle on the check mark. And then you can tab off of this to the next button and press enter to go to the next question in the assessment. So we're just gonna repeat the process. We're gonna go Alt C. I'm gonna arrow down here to the question and it says, uh, it's a true false question. It's uh, what, is the, what is the name of Apple's built-in screen reader? And we know from some of the material I was just covering that um, uh, it's uh, called voiceover. So this is a true question. So I'm just gonna go to the true radio button. I'm gonna press space bar to toggle on the check mark. And I'm gonna tab off of this again to next. And Alt C again. We're gonna come down here. This is uh, another multiple choice question. Approximately how many test cases will have been completed by on the Sakai 22 test script by blind and low vision testers at the conclusion of this latest, latest round of testing? And I'm just gonna tell you what the answer is and it's 2,400, which is an impressive number. So if we go down here and we're gonna find the radio button for 2,400 and we're gonna press space bar to toggle on the check mark. And we're gonna tab down to next. And here's the last question. So Alt C, we're gonna jump down here, arrow. Um, we got another true false. Uh, the acronym ARIA stands for Applications Regulating Internet Access. And this is part of JAWS's segment he did on screen readers. And, uh, but I believe uh, we may have cut it off uh, short of him getting to this. And, We'll, we'll tell you that this is false. ARIA um, stands for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. So if we go and hit spacebar and tag on that, and then normally we would tab down to the grade for submitting, but I'm just gonna exit here and then I'm gonna come down here and return to assessment. And let me just do a real quick on, check on time. Okay, so we're running short on time. But I did want to just quickly uh, point out that since we had you logged in as uh, on to the A11Y site as students, we were somewhat limited in some of the uh, keystrokes and things that we we could uh, show you. Um, but for instance, one of the things that we didn't encounter during uh, during the demo and test quizzes was uh, combo box. But if you really quick do Alt L, and then you tab to announcements, and then. If we do Alt C to jump down to the main content and then we arrow down here a little ways. Here's the combo box right here. So the key, key uh, keyboard command for operating a combo box is Alt down arrow. And then you that'll open the combo box and then you can use your up down arrows to move between the selections here. And so, and then when you have the selection you want, then you can tab off of that. Um, and then just lastly, really quickly here, we'll go Alt L. And if we go to this lessons page, I just wanted to show you here, come down and uh, this block of text here, this is the text that Jaws was reading off of for his uh, video that, that we were trying to play earlier. So all that information about, uh, screen reader basics is going to be available here. And then if you jump down to the level two heading, uh, there's a bunch of additional information and resources that I uh, included here on this lessons page that you can come back and check out when you have time. So I'm going to really quick uh, go over here, stop screen share, and just spend a minute or two talking about the relevance of keyboard navigation as it relates to our accessibility testing strategy for Sakai. So for the last couple of years now, we've been building out an accessibility test script, which is an Excel-based test script that myself and other blind and low vision users work off of uh, to perform manual functional verification testing for both uh, screen reader as well as keyboard testing. And so a part, through a partnership which we have with an Indian-based organization called VisionAid, uh, which provides IT training to blind and low vision individuals in India, uh, we were actually able to bring on four additional blind and low vision testers. So between myself and the vision aid testers, um, 
at the end of next month, when we wrap up our testing on Sakai 22, which is what we're currently testing on, we'll have performed over 2,400 test cases across four different combinations of screen readers and web browsers. Uh, in addition, uh, this past year, we were actually able to um, uh, include our cited, some cited testers in our accessibility uh, testing efforts. Um, th and through a partnership with one of our partner institutions, Marist College, uh, we had a couple of their cited testers who are part of our regular QA team uh, work through an adaptation of our accessibility test script to, uh, to do keyboard testing. So the thought being that if they go through and complete keyboard testing on all the test scripts, any of those test cases that they had to fail would be likely uh, you know, failed from an accessibility and screen reader perspective as well. So it was just a way for us to just quickly move through the whole test script and identify and prioritize those issues which needed to, you know, needed to be kind of moved, moved up the queue. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Chandrika and Ujwala, the, the students from Maris that were uh, helping with that effort. So if you guys are, are watching, uh, kudos to you. Thanks for everything you do. And then uh, just finally, just to kind of wrap up here, this session that we're doing here today, uh, an interactive demo to kind of, um, you know, expose you all as members of the Sakai community uh, to this topic. You know, the, the, uh, the fact that, you know, you now hopefully have a little bit better understanding of what that experience is for a screen reader user, a blind or low vision user that's navigating through Sakai. Um, you hopefully have at least, you know, some basic uh, skills for, you know, for navigating uh, the site using the keyboard. You know, hopefully as you all, you all are in Sakai doing what you do, um, you can, you know, keep that in mind that you can, um, you know, you can uh, be thinking about what that experience might be like for a blind or low vision user. You might be able to do, you know, some quick keyboard testing. And then hopefully you're helping us identify those issues early on so that we can report them and you know our team can get to work on helping resolve them. So with that, I am going to stop talking in case we wanna we wanna take some questions. And I know there's a bunch of chat, uh, questions going through in the chat. So Derek, I'm gonna let you be air traffic yes. control. Yes, so our first question, Chris, could you talk a few seconds about the differences between simple static analysis to comply with the standards versus UX for blind and low vision users. Oh, wow, man, that's, we're getting like way into the weeds of uh, web, <laughs> web content accessibility yeah. guidelines. Um, so I, I, maybe I'll, I'll frame that answer for that question in terms of kind of what we've been doing with our approach. Uh, because with accessibility, there's a million different tools and ways that you can try to assess the accessibility of a website. Um, for instance, there's automated tools that you can run scans of websites to, to look for, you know, things that are just done wrong in the back end code. And then there's, of course, uh, you know, the more of the qualitative user experience. And so what we've been focusing on for a lot of what we do with our user testing within Sakai is on the user experience. So can someone who's using a screen reader go in and perform basic functions in Sakai with a, with a keyboard, keyboard and screen reader? And so um, that, that's kind of like the first level uh, kind of check for, you know, it, how accessible a feature is or how accessible a website is, is, you know, are there at least some workarounds? And then, yeah, you start getting into, um, you know, the letter of the law stuff when it comes to a lot of the other accessibility stuff. So I know I kind of dodged that question a little bit, but I guess uh, that's all I'm going to answer for the time being. With, uh, Thank you. <laughs> the amount of time, the time we have. Yeah, we have uh, another question here. Uh, they were wondering if there is perhaps a basic instruction sheet um, in which highlights the keyboard commands that they can use. Do you have a preference or something that you could recommend? You know, and I didn't touch on this. I, I think it was uh, later on in Jaws's segment, but you know, the thing, the, the thing is, is that there's so many keyboard commands. There's keyboards commands that are 
uh, specific to operating systems. There's keyboard commands that are specific to applications, to you know uh, machines and and devices. That I mean, there are literally hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands, of keyboard commands. And it's one of the things, honestly, as a as a uh, person with a disability that has to use assistive technology, that it's really challenging to try to remember all these different. Uh, and they're very most in a lot of cases complex keyboard commands, but um, yeah, I mean there if if you get stuck and uh, most of the basic ones you can Google and find, uh, and that's usually the the easiest way to find them. Like what I do it all the time when I'm when I'm trying to remember uh, a, a keyboard command that I don't use, uh, you know, frequently. You know, I'll be sitting upstairs at my desk and I'll just scream out to my Google Home Assistant like, hey, Google, what's the shortcut, you know, command for accessing blah, blah, blah. So um, that's Google's probably the best uh, source, but um, there is not just one resource that's all inclusive, exhaustive list of all the keyboard commands um, that I've found. Okay. So sorry, I can't be more helpful there. No, it's great. Thank you so much for the presentation, Chris. We are just uh, we're a minute late here um, on. Uh, ending the session. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, attending the session. We do have a 30 minute uh, lunch break built in. So our next session is going to be at 1150, a, a showcase. So uh, we will see everybody hopefully at the uh, showcase in about 30 minutes. Yeah, and before we um, kick everybody out <laughs> real quick, yep. um, if anybody had trouble getting into the, um, the A11Y site, um, we made it joinable, so anybody should be able to join if they don't already have it. I also updated the list, so um, most of the folks should be already enrolled. So um, I encourage you to go and check that out and try navigating uh, with the keyboard um, you know, during the break or later on in the day if you didn't get a chance to do that during Chris's session. And swearing, um, swearing is acceptable when you're trying to do it. <laughs> yeah, copy yeah. and paste out the direct link that Wilma put in. Uh, and you should be able to access the site directly if you have that link. Great. And um, if you have any other questions for Chris, feel free to post them in the conversations area. All right, All right that's well, it. Thank right. you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> All right, bye-bye.